I was working for Jim Beatty, which in those days was a company with about 35 or 40 people, and they were we were flight testing this little airplane called the Beatty 5, and we were, he had promised to deliver all these kits to, I don't know, 10,000 people and whatever. There were only a couple guys out there when I flew this flight that you saw, the very big one. So Monday, I came to work, and I announced to everybody that, man, I, I build up confidence now. I'm going to fly the first flight of the very big one. <laughs> I'd already flown it, but I didn't tell anybody. I wish I had video of this. But anyway, I took off, <laughs> and I flew it erratic as hell. At first, I did a bunch of these and these and whatever, and you know they're all thinking, "Oh, Rutan's good about ready to buy the farm," you know. But it was kind of—it was just a joke. <laughs> yeah, I know. Anyway, there I am in the BD-5. I was the second guy after Les Bourbon to fly the BD-5. Uh, I had principal design responsibility for just two things when I was at BD. I wasn't the designer of the BD-5 or the BD-6 or the BD-4, but I was, uh, I, I was a flight test director, and I, I, I ran the team that was developing it, but I wasn't the airplane designer. I had two design jobs that were mine. One was the jet version of the BD-5, and you see that up in the right, and uh, you may have seen it in, uh, in uh, uh, some Bond movies, and, and they still do air shows with it. And the other thing was an idea that, was, that worked a lot better than it deserved to. It's called the truck a plane, or he called it, we called it the truck a plane. BD called it the BD trainer. What we did is it took a BD 5, a real BD 5, and stripped it down, took the motor and the land, not the landing gear, but just took everything out. It had a landing gear, basic airframe, pilot, made it as light as we could, and we went in and found the center of gravity of it, and we put a big rod in very much like this wind tunnel model, okay? And then we built some structure going back to a truck. See the truck behind, okay? Now, that rod in, it, it, uh, it wasn't just in place where the airplane had to lift it. The rod in had an upward force of a couple of 300 pounds. And we did that by making a fulcrum and putting garage door springs I think you can see them on the, uh, on the right here. I can find the cursor. Up here are, are some, uh, a, a whole row of garage door springs. So if this airplane was on the ground, it would only weigh, uh, you know, 50 or 75 pounds. Now you get in it, it's heavier, right? But now, but it's much lighter than a BD-5, which means it has a lower stall speed, okay? But if you climb, the springs relax, and if you get up high, the stall speed's uh, it's not going to have this lift coming in through the rod end. So now it has a higher stall speed. And the cool thing about it is you can fly it high and do a stall, and you're cushioned by these springs so you don't end up busting the landing gear. Now, you can bust the landing gear real easy on a BD-5. I don't know if you've flown one, but, but anyway. So we had something that, that people could could learn to fly on. Now, the truck driver, all he did uh, is there were stops on it if you went left and right. All he did was steer to keep you right in the middle, right in the front. And originally, he was the throttle, and the guy in the airplane would call for more power. What we did is we put a push-pull uh, uh, thing so that the throttle on the BD-5 ran the carburetor on the truck. Now, you could sit there and peel, peel rubber <laughs> from the BD-5 throttle. That was really cool. And you could take off, and then you could slow down to hold your speed, and you could pull off power, and you could land. And you can't see the truck at all. The thing that was different is the truck ran over tar strips is you had this kind of a lunging <laughs> thing. You know, uh, it was nice and soft this way, but fore and aft, you feel a kind of like, so it was kind of like you're in turbulence, but kind of a little bit of a jar to the turbulence. But it was the greatest uh, trainer in the world because we had a single place airplane that, and there was no two place version of it. So everybody is uh, gonna have zero time in tight 
when he, when he first makes, flies it. So the idea is that he flies in a trainer and uh, it worked a lot better than we thought. You go out and do crosswind landings in it, for example, which is a tough thing to do on a gusty day and it teaches you exactly the right thing to do. But you're flying an airplane that, that is the, the full scale airplane, you're sitting in it, okay? And the stall speed is slower though. Now, we were gonna take it down the freeway, but we'd be worried about the guy in the airplane trying to go over the overpass, so we didn't do that. <laughs>